Right is right and wrong is wrong. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm looking for a new friend, I don't generally go to the jailhouse and, uh, you know, find the person that committed the most murders and say to myself, oh, that's the person I want to hang out with. That's, that's the person I want to be my best friend. <laughs> I mean, do you do that? I don't know. I, I don't. I don't generally do that. Do I know people that have been in jail? Yeah. But I'm saying I don't go perusing at the jailhouse for, uh, you know, a group of cronies to, uh, you know, kick it with and hang out with and I'm going to make these people my best friends. Um, now, the funny thing that I'm noticing is that the media... See, they, they, they try to make a black people and other groups the scapegoat. So they try to make it look like, um, you know, black people are crimin, they're all criminals and, uh, this and that. But see, when you really stop and think about it, these, uh, people, uh, you know, in the hood and stuff like that, these people are committing very petty crimes. These are not big deal, uh, crime, you know, selling drugs. Who cares? Like, I, I really don't care. Yeah, can that damage lives? Yeah, of course it can. Absolutely. It can cause a, a, a lot of damage, of course. But these are very minuscule, petty crimes. It's like, um, you know, uh, the real problem right now, see, seems to be these Harvard graduates. See, these Harvard graduates that seem to, uh, you know, come up with death dust concoctions to kill as many people as possible seem to be the real menaces to society and criminals. Uh, that seems to be the real culprit and the real problem, if you ask me. So it's just funny that they try to paint other people as the scapegoat to take the fall and oh they're the bad guys and oh this and oh that. Uh no, actually they're not. They're not. They're trying to survive in an environment that has been created that is next to impossible and is is quite unsurvivable. So they're just doing what what uh anyone that was trying to survive would do. Okay, so that's not really a big deal. So, um, you know, you might, if, if you were thinking of sending your child to Harvard, you, you may want to rethink that decision, because look at what Harvard is churning out lately. Uh, nothing but menaces to society that are creating all kinds of problems and chaos. So, um, you know, it's pretty interesting the way things are, 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 you know, shaping up. Anyway, I want to get into, I'm going to show you a clip. Um, I found these videos from this woman. Her name is Miss Deborah Tavares. Um, I've known about her for a while, but she just recently put out a five part series of videos, which I found to be the most comprehensive. A breakdown of what's currently happening right now. So I think um, you have to watch all five of these videos and that this will give you a good idea of what's currently happening in the world right now because it's kind of hard to um, you know paint a picture because there's so many variables and different things going on right now that it's kind of hard to explain how it's all, it's all tied in together. The 5G, the metals that they're dropping, uh, from the chemtrails, et cetera, et cetera. So I'd rather just let her do it because she does uh, an excellent job at just breaking the whole thing down. So what I'll do is I'll list all five of the links. Oh, by the way, if you hear a bunch of popping, it's just, it's fireworks. Okay, so it's, you know, it's just uh, fireworks going on outside here and there. So anyway, um, yeah, so what all I'm going to do in this video is just play the first part, and then I'll list the second, third, fourth, and fifth parts um, in the description. I'll, I'll put all the links in the description box. 
so you can go and you've got to watch all five parts of this video so you can see what is currently going on. And then I'll also list um, another video that she has um, in regards to the fact that the coastlines are going to be under attack here in the United States. They're already um, uh, bombing California with earthquakes and uh, they have the capabilities to create these earthquakes. They have um, Tesla and weapons that they can create earthquakes and they can create tsunamis. Man-made earthquakes and man-made tsunamis. They are currently attacking the West Coast. California is, is under severe attack right now. They already flooded out the middle of the country, so my guess is the East Coast will be next. So what I'll do is I'll list all five of her um, videos and then I'll also leave a clip uh, of a video she does. I think it's called The Coastlines Are Under Attack or something like that. And that also gives really good information. And then um, if you watch these five videos, watch The Coastlines Are Under Attack. It's a little bit time consuming, but when you have time, um, watch as much as you can and then compare it with, I'll also leave the links for two other weather channels. One is called Never Lose Truth, and the other is Mike Morales Weather Broadcast. So watch the five-part series on the genocide that's currently taking place. Then you have to watch the two weather broadcasts. Um, I would consider watching every night, every day, uh, so that you know when your area starts to become under attack, you know, if you're going to need to evacuate, if you're going to, you know, it helps to see what they're doing before they do it, so then you know what to expect, because see these mainstream shills on the, um, mainstream media and these meteorologists, who are all um, part of the deception are not ever going to tell you any of the truth. So you might as well never turn on the TV. The mainstream media is all liars and they frankly are all co-conspirators co to the evil. Anyone lying and deceiving people about what's going on right now is a co-conspirator to the evil. That includes politicians. Anyone covering up the evil and deceiving the public is a co-conspirator to evil. Okay, so let me just um, minimize this and we'll get to the video. And I would like to hear your thoughts after you watch the videos. Okay, so here we go. This is um, Miss Deborah Tavares. She has a website. And her YouTube channel is called StopTheCrime.net. She has a website also called StopTheCrime.net. Uh, actually, her YouTube channel is called StopTheCrime.net New. Because she, I guess, maybe she had a different channel and they shut it down, I'm assuming. And now she has this one. So here we go. Okay. Uh, this is Deborah Tavares with StopTheCrime.net. We run PrimaryWater.org. I would ask that everybody that's listening to this frequent our website, go to our YouTube video channel frequently. We're continuously posting radio shows that we do and documents that we find on our resource document uh, page. We do email blast outs, so if you do sign up for StopTheCrime.net, you'll get a lot of information that you wouldn't get uh, without signing up. So with that, I'm going to be covering a number of topics today. Just to keep you uh, in uh, attention, we're going to be cover covering um, coastlines under attack, the how the uh, different facets of all military operations are involved, including the United States and global military operations. We're under mass assault, 
and most people are completely unaware. Um, we'll be covering the use of um, torture and the targeting of individuals. There are millions of individuals worldwide that are being tortured and targeted. And we're going to also discuss our city's intention to reduce all of your resources. And we're going to start now. So again, you can't hide behind any closed doors. So you have a choice. You either engage and you find out what's going on and you find out what's happening with the use of directed energy weapons, which comes in many forms. Don't think of directed energy weapons as just only lasers that start <coughs> fires and beam weapons from space, which I will show you. But also think in terms of what's happening overseas. Look at the fires. Um, look at what is happening with the droughts. This is global. This is worldwide. In fact, right now in Queensland, Australia, the farmers uh, are in such a severe drought, they're losing thousands and thousands of cattle, and they're committing suicide because the way of their life is over, and they're not able to survive. And this was happening in India as well. Again, we are under mass assault with floods. We will be talking about what is being used in our country to target, to increase the types of chaos and loss of property that we're seeing happening, besides just creating atmospheric rivers, a new word, uh, a false word, to make us believe that this is the new normal of climate change. This is increased weapons. This is increased weather weapons. This is not a new normal of climate change. Let's be very clear on that. Again, the fires, we're in a, a stage five red flag warning right now, Pacific Gas and Electric, who is Rothschild, has told us all the power will be going down frequently. We'll be talking about the planned black starts throughout the United States and the world and what we are going to be put through. Again, an illustration of the type of weather assaults that we have been hit, the kind of damage, the kind of warfare. This is war. We're in a war economy now, wherever these directed energy weapons hit. We know that Santa Rosa is massively underwater financially. We're going to be talking about who they have hired from England, from London, to create new energy resources. You will be stunned. That's to follow here. These are... Uh, uh, snow bombs. Uh, this was used in, uh, this is an illustration of what the snow bombs look like. We discovered that these were used um, on a couple hundred acre new car plant in Mexico uh, where they were um, disrupting the Volkswagen plant. And then the farmers in that area were really upset because Volkswagen was using their own weapon system to defend themselves from this attack. And um, recently in Reading, as of a week ago, they were hit with uh, snow bombs. So yeah, this right. is all a weapons system. <clears throat> so again, uh, the town of Paradise um, was burning in November 8th of 2018. We were on fire here in Sonoma County in, on October 8th of 2017. And we didn't have as much clarity during that fire as we now have, looking at what occurred in paradise. I think not being in the mode of shock and awe with the use of, of weapons systems, we can now more plainly see what we face. This is an illustration of what's happening in Australia after many years of drought, and then atmospheric rivers and flooding everything out. The cattle um, died. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, in the Midwest floods, severely damaged farmland and kills livestock. They go on to talk about that there are mystery cattle deaths after Hurricane Michael in October of uh, 2017. They say after the most widespread disaster we have had in our state's history, officials expect their initial farm damage estimates, 400 million in damages to crops and 400 million in loss of livestock, will be uh, exceeded in Nebraska's Department of Agriculture. And there's a rash of unexplained cattle deaths in parts of Alabama, Georgia, Florida in the months following the passage of Hurricane Michael back in October. 
And the veterinarians are saying that there are a number of mysterious deaths that are attributed to fungi, molds, and mildews in the uh, cattle food supply. So we're being hit with everything uh, from the cyclones, hurricanes, droughts, and fires, diseases, and weaponized bio um, implants as well, on another aspect of what we'll be getting into. Now, uh, this was in... Um, 2018, a month or two after the fires in Sonoma County, I went before the Sonoma County Board of uh, Supervisors to remind them that a few years earlier, we had told them about the plan to burn up Northern California. They did nothing, said nothing, and that plan was acted on in 2017. Now, I'm going to read to you which I did not, um, don't always do in my presentations, exactly what the email exchange was between Pacific Gas and Electric, which the email exchange you see there on the right of the screen. And this was an email exchange uh, that I received uh, from an active group against smart meters. And there was a lawsuit that was initiated. I wasn't part of that lawsuit but uh, it was a requirement by a law judge that Pacific Gas and Electric, a.k.a. Rothschild, return and download um, all these documents. 65,000 documents in total were given to this EMF safety network out of Sebastopol. They gave me this email because they did not know what to do with it. I'm going to read that to you now. Um, this is dated August the 22nd of 2011, and it's from... Uh, the California Public Utility Commission uh, to Pacific Gas and Electric, and it says, I assume you're reassembling a high-level task force of washed up and never were, yet somehow movie star handsome, former astronauts to handle PG&E's response to the upcoming damaging space weather. Also, please dribble out one at a time over the next few months all internal memos, lawsuits, PowerPoint presentations, and officer cover-up directives in which PG&E is repeatedly warned about damaging space weather and chooses to do nothing, then has its lawyers blame its customers, a.k.a. earthlings, for any adverse consequences resulting. Now that was from the CPUC, and this is what, within a few minutes, PG&E responded. PG&E says, just a reminder, we are the first to propose a solar generator in space that will beam RF waves down to a receptor site and convert it to DC current. We have changed our receptor site from the Mojave Desert to Sebastopol in California. Now there's another Sebastopol near the Nevada City area. That's the Sebastopol that they're talking about. And then the final response, keeping in mind that the subject is referenced, space weather. Space weather, this is the subject. And then it says, from the California Public Utility Commission back to PG&E. Ah, the good old days. So, we were told, we've been warned, we didn't know, and now you're starting to hear some of this information. Okay, this is uh, a utility bill insert. I recommend that all of you look at the inserts in your utility bills all the time. And the reason I recommend that you do that is you get information that they have to tell you, but you'll never hear on the media, per se. And why I'm uh, highlighting this is this is from a bill that we get from Southern California Edison, same thing, Rothschild LLC operated. Um, because we get bills from not only PG&E, but from Southern California Edison. And it says, reality of year-round fire season is new normal facing California state leaders. When the National Weather Service declares a red flag warning, part of Southern California Edison's response will be to include automatically re-energizing the power lines um, after they go offline in high fire risk areas. These lines are not re-energized until they are fully inspected. There must be a sharing 
of the increasing risk of climate change impacts across all of society. This is Rothschild telling you, you must all share in the consequences of weather weapons. Then they say, quote, we will continue to partner on solutions that will make California more resilient against the impacts of natural disasters and climate change, says Piazzo. We support state leaders as they seek to solve the statewide problem and respond to California's new normal. So they have fully embraced the uh, weapons system, calling it climate change and deceiving us when it's really weather weapons, and we're going to talk more about that. Certainly, we know that our utility bills are escalating. Rothschild will never pay uh, for the lawsuits uh, that were initiated against the massive homes that were lost. This will end up falling in all of our laps as rate, as rate payers. So this is horrifying, and it should be horrifying to you, too. And this is what we discovered on the Pacific Gas and Electric website. PG&E is going bankrupt because they're going into another electric delivery system. And this is a system of delivering power from space-based satellites or solar. And I'm going to read you some of this. It's just horrifyingly interesting. It says, in energy from outer space, it may seem like the stuff from science fiction, but it's actually closer to reality than you think. It's already happening, so we'll talk about that. Find out what researchers are boldly going where no watt has gone before, where the sun always shines. Solar radiation is the most promising form of space-based power. While a growing solar energy industry already exists, um, outsourcing to space could help solve a lot of issues, such as land-based solar power is um, limited by night and cloud cover. I'm going to stop right there, cloud cover. This is where the geoengineering comes into play and the intensification now of solar dimming. We're going to see far less sunny days and more gray, overcast days because solar dimming has been massively <clears throat> increased so that they can sell the idea to all of us to spend all of our money on weapons from space to, to focus beamed weapons back to us, and we pay for it. But let me just continue. So they say uh, that the ground-based solar is, is certainly limited by night, cloud cover, and the atmosphere in space. The sun never goes away. They go on to say that uh, solar uh, particles in space could be attached to orbiting satellites and even stationed on the moon. So we talk about what they're doing in their um, patents. And it's a secret, but it's not a secret because you're finding out your utility has a secret and we're telling you about it. Um, the electricity being from space for weaponizing commercial space-based solar power from satellites. So um, Solarin uh, is a corporation based in Manhattan Beach. It has several pronunciations. I call it Solarin. Um, it holds uh, two patents that I'm going to talk about below for transmitting microwave-directed energy uh, from space to pinpoint locations on Earth. And under one of the patents, they talk about how the solar-powered satellite will generate a powerful radio uh, frequency beam focused on an array of collector antennas where it will be transformed to electrical power supplied to your utility company. And under this next patent, which sadly is cut off a little bit, but I'll tell you what uh, is cut off, uh, solar-powered satellites will generate a powerful microwave radio frequency beam to control the weather by heating deployments of aluminum oxide or other conductive part particles and particulates sprayed from aircraft. The patent goes on to describe its ability to alter the weather and cause uh, cyclones and tropical cyclones and hurricanes. I looked up um, Solarin. You can all do the same thing. 
but what they're selling it to us in in uh, telling us is that it is um, zero emission. It will reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, which is all false science. These are genocide policies, the illusion of greenhouse gas emissions required reductions. We'll get into that. So uh, they're telling us that um, it's going to be occurring, that it, uh, they'll, they'll have electrical electricity sales and support groups, and that we'll save electricity. Well, there will be fewer of us to save electricity, I can guarantee you. So this is an example of what it looks like, what the Solarin beaming looks like. Uh, again, Solarin, S-O-L-A-R-E-N, Space Solar Power Plant System. Let's talk about uh, the countries uh, that are involved. Um, we're talking about China, the United States, Canada, the UK, and Russia. We're all working together. There are no borders. It is an illusion to think that we are vying against China for anything. The, the one world order or the new world order that we've heard so often, it is already there. It is already there. We'll be talking about that. But we're talking about what China says to secure the space superpower status, again, it's all a mechanism to get people to throw in money to beat the competitor. We're always either in competition with Russia or with, we're within competition of China. Why? To get us to give up our tax money for weapon systems that they use against us. We're the enemy, and we're going to talk about that. So China plans to construct many of these space solar uh, <coughs> powered farms and so do all of the other countries now we have been warned you have all been warned i like many of you didn't understand the warning because when john f kennedy said that there will be infiltration instead of invasion on subversion instead of elections on intimidation instead of free choice on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. We were warned. Did we understand that back then? I didn't. I did not. Had no clue. Then, when I was preparing a smart meter conference a number of years ago, I, by mistake, um, clicked on the skyscape that you see in that slide to the lower right. You see the skyscape. Uh, I clicked on it, and this mission statement popped up. And I was stunned at this mission statement. Now, this was a few years ago. This is when we were thinking we could stop the smart meters. The opt-out, everyone needs to understand, the opt-out was and is only an appeasement plan so that the meters could be rolled globally, everywhere. And it not only includes the electric wireless smart meters, but now also the wireless smart meters for water as well. So the mission statement talked about a revolution in the infrastructure. And I remember just being so stunned when I read that um, there would be uh, the, all of the traditional and physical infrastructure would be replaced with cyber infrastructure, computers, networks, and sensors in ways that were just emerging. And they go on to talk about how they were anxious to get this hidden secret out to all of us. But I never heard their hit, hidden secret. Did you? I never did. But now you're hearing about this. I discovered this back in 2010. 2010. We were also warned by former FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover in 1956 when he said this, the individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. The American mind, and I would say the minds of everybody worldwide, simply does, has not come to the realization of the evil which has been introduced into our midst. It rejects even the assumption that human creatures could espouse a philosophy 
which must ultimately destroy all that is good and decent. Destroy all that is good and decent. I didn't know either uh, back when my kids were in school that they were being indoctrinated. Um, and now, of course, we encourage that children be unschooled, not homeschooled, but unschooled. And for the reasons that we were told throughout the eons, and even back in 1903, when uh, John D. Rockefeller said, I don't want a nation of thinkers, I want a nation of workers. And then we know that um, it was also said the aim of public education is not to spread enlightenment at all. It is simply to reduce as many individuals as possible to the same safe level to breed and train a standardized citizenry to put down dissent and originality. Accomplished. Look where we are today because of the psyops of the educational system. Then we have a quote from Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. If you have not read that 43-page document, I would immediately request that you think about reading that. You're going to hear me talking about Cliff Notes to get you further ahead than the years that it took me to learn all of this. So I'm going to be suggesting documents that are quick and fast reads to help you get up to speed faster and to also be able to discuss things and hand out material and tell your friends. So in the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars document, an excerpt from page 7, it says this about education. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort, so that the moat of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. With such an initial handicap, even the bright lower class individuals have little, if any, hope of extricating themselves from their assigned lot in life. This form of slavery is essential to maintain some measure of social order, peace, and tranquility for the ruling upper class. This is Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Now, when we were recently in Ireland, there was a global um, walkout from kids all over the world protesting climate change. And they're as horrified about their fear and being propagandized in school uh, about too many people using too much stuff. And they honestly believe that uh, many of the older generation have been the reason that their, their resources have been used up. And they're angry and they're fearful. They're scared to death because this is what they've been taught. We're running out of resources. So they're protesting on a walkout day all over the world. Climate is changing. Why aren't we? We have to act now. So just as many of us who realize that climate change is weather weapons, they've, we as parents have been instructing our children to react this way. We've had them learn a reality that is false in faith. They're going out into a world certainly unprepared for reality. And it's actually very dangerous for all of us, very dangerous. Now, I want to get into uh, the bankruptcy of the United States. Um, I met uh, James Trafficant at a conference uh, just a few years before he uh, died in a mysterious tractor accident in his barn in Ohio. Um, James uh, Trafficant was a United States congressional. He was a congressman. And he said this and put this into congressional record, and this is extremely important. Um, Mr. Speaker, we are here now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in world's history, the U.S. government. The gold standard has been abrogated, the gold clause dissolved, and the sovereign authority of the United States and official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and its Further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. The receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund. All United States offices, officials, departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under the emergency war powers. 
cities, states, and nations have no jurisdiction. No jurisdiction. So you wonder why you go and you speak before a city council or a county board of supervisors, or you trek all the way as we had for so many years down to San Francisco to certainly try to stop this whole one bay regional, one bay area situation. Hundreds of people would truck down there and get there two to three minutes, and oftentimes if there were too many of us, they would uh, take our time down to one minute. We'd drive for hours to get down for one minute. It's because they weren't listening. It's a corporation. They're only creating the illusion of listening to us. That's in their corporate bylaws. So they can get away with this fraud and this deception. This is what has happened. So we are the enemy. And I would encourage all of you to take a look at Senate Report 93549. It's the Emergency Powers Statutes, data back in 1973 where uh, they went through, and since 1933, every sitting president has signed an annual continued national state of emergency. We have always been in a national state of emergency. That is why our elected officials are not doing what we think that they should be, because everything is going through exec the executive branch, through statutes. Our system has been usurped, and it has been for a very long time, and it's fairly plain to see that we are the enemy, being sprayed with chemtrails, being burned out, contaminated water, contaminated food, GMO, vaccinations, fraudulent school systems, and the illusion that we can vote. We are, in fact, the enemy. Here's something most important for everyone to understand and something extremely dangerous. I can't underscore this enough. The American Bar Association adopted by the House of Delegates, this was back on August the 11th and 12th, back in 2003. They say, resolved that the American Bar Association recognizes that good governance and the rule of law are essential to achieving sustainable development. Further resolved that the American Bar Association reaffirms its 1991 commitment to sustainable development and adopts the internationally accepted concept of sustainable development as recognized at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development in 1992 and subsequent international conferences. Um, achievement of environmental protection, economic development, social development, and peace for present and future generations. Our bar association, all of our attorneys carry bar cards. British accreditation regencies, they work for Rothschild. They work for Rothschild. They are creating laws now for sustainability, which is weather weapons. We are so deceived, so utterly deceived and human compromised. So, silent weapons for quiet wars, another quote. Um, a silent weapons system operates from data collected from a docile public by legal, but not always lawful force. When the government is able to collect tax and seize private property without justification, it is an indication that the public is ripe for surrender and is consenting to enslavement and legal encroachment. We've consented. We have been illegally encroached upon. Our land is being decimated, and so are we. We've consented. War is therefore the balancing system by killing the true creditors. That's all of us, the public, which the elites have taught to exchange true value for inflated currency and falling back on whatever is left of the resources of nature and the regeneration of those resources. Our resources are being contaminated, polluted, and destroyed. There is going to soon be nothing for us to fall back on, and I can't underscore this enough. So this is a document that um, I also highly recommend that you take a look at. Uh, we received this from a whistleblower years back, and um, it is called Aquarius Group 
Operation Briefing. I'm going to read a few excerpts from this. It is on StopTheCrime.net on our original page of StopTheCrime.net. If you go to the website and you type in Aquarius Group, this will pop up. It's not a very large document, as you can see, but it is well worth having a copy of this in your library. So I don't know how many of you can read this, um, so I'm going to read this to you. Um, it's a secret uh, document, and it was revealed. It's the planned chemical sedation of the population using radio microwave frequencies for mass mind control. That's what all of the rollout of 5G and all of the increased frequencies in cell towers and wind towers and your smartphones and all of your Wi-Fi and wireless is doing. It's for mind control. The ultimate control is the human mind. So let's talk about what this document said. It said, few people ever had possession of the Aquarius operations briefing. One person held it for years and knew this briefing document contained small punctuation errors. Each copy had different errors so they could trace who leaked it. One source is now deceased, so it can't hurt if traced to that person. It's time to use this information to try to stop this diabolical plot. The plot is in full gear. Full gear. So let's read about what it's in full gear about. On page one, electromagnetic radio wave and microwave pulse mind warfare has great advantages in that desired subjects or populations have no knowledge of the procedure being implemented. On page two, mind control. Chemical and polypharmaceutical saturation has been achieved over the past 20 years of implementation with this purpose in mind and is achieved through purposeful covert introduction into population areas. In some cases, this is achieved by deliberate overt introduction through exposure or consumption on behalf of the population base in everyday usage of public water supplies, airborne pollutants, chemical agents, in whole varieties of foodstuffs, in your clothing, clothing, your dyes, in your clothing, and more. We are the enemy. Goes on to talk about how the plan of the Aquarius operations and the circle of seven CEOs was to implement various forms of mind control to augment a basic tolerance of each other under whatever guise is necessary. This will eventually lead to internal unrest and the occupation by United Nations forces. This is where we are headed now. Who will be under orders to keep the peace of the host country? We discovered this has already occurred in France. It's already occurred in France. France is now a full dictatorship. So I could read more, but I won't. I'll invite all of you to please read this for yourselves. Um, I am going to pause for a moment uh, because I'm going into another segment. So um, we'll pause now, and then I will continue. Okay, so that's part one of a five-part series. Uh, make sure to watch part two, three, four, and five, and the other information I'm going to share in the description box. Um, share this stuff far and wide. You have to start warning people. This is very serious and dangerous, and it's currently underway. The United States is currently under severe attack, I believe we are the main target. Uh, although this is happening globally, I think that they want to, they absolutely want to completely destroy the United States. I think because of, um, well, I'm not sure why, but it, it seems to me that the United States is the main target to be taken out. Uh, so... And it's already happen, happening. I mean, they, there was a massive earthquakes 
uh, in California the last few days. Um, are they going to, uh, you know, try to have a slew of earthquakes to make that the Oroville Dam break? Uh, because they've already filled it up with water on purpose. All that rain that got in there, it was raining for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. That was all man-made created rain. So they filled up that dam. Now they're starting in with the earthquakes over there. It's all on radar. If you watch Never Lose Truth channel and Mike Morales' weather channel, which I watch daily, so I know exactly what's going on, I assume after that they're going to move to the East Coast. Um, and I believe they're going to cause a fake tsunami or some type of massive earthquake on the East Coast as well. So that's my opinion, um, just based on the videos I've watched for Miss Tavares and others. Um, you know, I'm not a psychic, but that looks to be what they're going to do. Um... So everyone's got to get on board with this and, and, and waking people up, sharing, telling your friends, telling your family, warning people of what is going on, and um, just share the information far and wide. Uh, and make sure to watch the, the, the uh, parts two through five of this video uh, with Miss Tavares. Okay, thank you.